In this video, we are revisiting Intellia Therapeutics one more time. The good news just keeps coming from this company, so we're back for more. Although I have a PhD in biomedical engineering and over 15 years of working experience in the healthcare industry, I do not intend to give you investment advice. Please consider your own risk profile before making any investments and research your investments wisely. In a previous video, I had just covered that the US FDA have accepted the investigational new drug application for NTLA-5001, which is a CRISPR-Cas-engineered T-cell candidate for acute myeloid leukemia. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a card here as well as in the link in the description below. So now we're back just a couple of weeks later, October 6, 2021, and Atelier Therapeutics announced that they have received the authorization to initiate a phase 1-2 clinical trial for NTLA-2002, which is an in vivo CRISPR-Cas engineered treatment for a hereditary angioedema. Hereditary angioedema is quite a mouthful, so let's first inform ourselves what kind of disease we're dealing with. Rarediseases.org is a great resource for that. We already know from Intellia Therapeutics, obviously, that it is a genetic disorder, and it affects uh, about 50,000 to 150,000 individuals worldwide in equal numbers, male and female. Hereditary angioedema is a dominant uh, trait genetic disease. That means if a parent, the mother or the father, have this uh, malformation or this uh, genetic disease, the chances of it being uh, passed on to the offspring, to the children, is about 50% regardless of the sex of the child. As we have already seen previously, it affects both male and female in equal numbers. You may already know that many diseases are linked to proteins not doing their job as intended. This can be due to misfolding or over underexpression of a particular protein that needs to serve very specific tasks in the human body. With hereditary angioedema, that is no different. The genetic deficiency causes a protein known as complement component C1 esterase inhibitor to uh, have a deficiency. And this leads to the manifestations of the disease. The disease symptoms do not sound very enticing at all. The disease is characterized by recurrent episodes of uh, fluids that accumulate outside of blood vessels or organs and this can ultimately lead to the blockage of blood can cause swelling therefore edema ultimately means tissue swelling which can cause airway obstruction intestinal distress uh, and so on and uh, can also be life-threatening as you can see here intelia therapeutics ntla 2002 program also is one of the CRISPR in vivo treatments and shows parallels with the NTLA 2001 treatment. Both are now or will enter soon as for uh, the hereditary angioedema treatment at the early stage clinical phases. I really love the way Intelia Therapeutics structure their website. With a single click, you get lots of disease information about the disease being treated. As in this case, we already see here again the population, 1 in 50,000, um, same number almost as we saw on rarediseases.org. We see here the frequency of the attacks that an individual generally experiences once uh, every week or every two weeks. That is quite severe given the unpredictable swelling and uh, pain as well as potentially being life-threatening. And good to know, ultimately, that this is a wholly owned program by Intellia Therapeutics, which should make this really interesting to investors if and when this program starts to show clinical benefits. I have already alluded to the fact that the NTLA 2001 program for the treatment of 
transthyretin amyloidosis is closely linked to the NTLA 2002 program. Uh, Time-wise, of course, because both of these uh, clinical trial activities follow in relatively short succession, but also because they are both in vivo treatments using CRISPR-Cas9 modalities. And just like in the previous study, NTLA 2001, here what Intellia are planning is a single dose genome editing therapeutic treatment in order to treat hereditary angioedema. This is particularly good news as they are planning to start enrollment by the end of 2021. And this in vivo treatment will actually be run in uh, New Zealand, uh, although they also state that clinical trial activities are being planned in other geographies as well. But based on this, I expect that the first patients by year end will be enrolled actually in New Zealand. The approach that Intellia Therapeutics are following here is to systemically administer a single dose of the CRISPR-Cas9 based therapeutic in order to inactivate a target gene that is calicreine in order to reduce the plasma amount of calicreine in the blood and therefore prevent the disease attacks. The approach taken here to inactivate the expression of the gene calicreine is relatively speaking easy or easier in comparison to correcting actually a gene. The approach is similar to what we have seen in some other diseases, um, sickle cell disease for instance, where also the silencing of the fetal hemoglobin gene is uh, achieved in a somewhat similar way. And so here, from the gene editing point of view, we're less concerned with the indel formation, which is somewhat variable and imprecise, um, but the indel formation ultimately is responsible for the silencing of a particular gene, which can then no longer be expressed or the proteins derived from the encoded gene message no longer really get expressed. And this is sort of the same approach that is taken here. And that is not to say that the gene editing is a correction of the gene, but it ultimately uh, silences one of the uh, proteins or gene expressions leading to protein expression that is responsible for many of the disease uh, manifestations. And again, here in the press release, also what I stated earlier, NTLA 2001 and 2002 are closely linked to uh, one another. And just like in any phase one clinical study, no surprise here, of course, the first work that is being done clinically is to evaluate the safety, tolerability, and the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of the single in vivo systemically administ administered dose of NTLA 2002. So currently I have looked on clinicaltrials.gov as well as on the New Zealand and Australia uh, clinical trial registry, which you can see here. And currently I did not really find a listing for these studies, but okay. I mean, they're planning to do the enrollment by year end. So perhaps it's not surprising that I have not found anything here quite yet. So then finally, let's recap what happened with Intellia and its stock price since uh, June 26, 2021, when they announced the first clinical trial data from their NTLA 2001 uh, in vivo CRISPR-Cas treatment for transthyretin amyloidosis. We can see here that the stock price took a drastic jump from 88, almost $89 in June then to uh, about $170. Since then, you can see that the stock price has hovered between 140 to around 160, recently has come down a little bit again to about 120 or 125. So uh, this could potentially mark a very interesting entry point into the stock again. Um, if we believe that the treatment 2000, NTLA 2002, which is closely linked to the previously started treatment 
uh, NTLA 2001, then perhaps the chances are in fact that the newly started clinical trial program for hereditary angioedema might equally show very promising clinical trial results. And this could catapult in the further distance when these results become available, the stock price again even higher. You, of course, have to know your own investment horizon, your risk appetite, and your ultimate investor profile in order to make the decision if an investment in Telia Therapeutics could be right for you. I cannot make that decision for you, and I am not giving you financial advice. If you have enjoyed this video and you're interested in this kind of content, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel.